video at one hour for the second one. All right, and welcome back to the playthrough here on the YouTube end of things. We've been streaming here for a bit, and the realm's been a bit more successful than us personally, but we're not surprised here. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, funniest fucking thing, speaking of the uh, immortality thing. Um, so me and Atreides were doing this uh, original uh, succession game, the one where we ended up forming the uh, Holy Roman Empire with Hispania, France, Italy, Britannia, and then eventually the Byzantines under our... Uh, Hats. So, of course, the rule because it's a succession game is you can't take, you can't become an, or you can't have an immortal ruler. So that way you pass it over to whoever's next. So, I get a chain of events for immortality because immortality is really rare to get, anyways. But if you succeed at getting through events and not dying and not becoming immortal, you can get some good benefits. Yeah, no. I, the first and only time I ever succeeded in getting immortality was the time that I wasn't even fucking supposed to. It's kind of great. We're going to extort some subjects now, because we kind of need to. And because we can't go to war without it, honestly. Oof. Yeah, we need the... Oh, there we go. That artisan workshop is putting in work for us. I like it. Carve out this dude's eyes. There we go. Oh, no. <laughs> of the Abbasid house. Okay, yeah. That works out. Always good to get some episodes. I know it's a certain law. That's right, because we have another marriage set up with the Arabians already. Who is he declaring on? Okay. Fuck it, whatever. We'll go ahead and join this war. We haven't been actively participating in many of Africa's wars, so I'm not too worried. I do want to go to war with Marrakech the second we have the gold, too, though. Because they got all those emergency event troops. From a holy war, but if it's a normal war, I'm sure they won't. Alrighty, so... Yeah, every now and, like, every now and again, too, I like to do uh, multiplayer games. Sometimes 
multiplayer with uh you know on stream and kind of open it up too so if that's a thing you guys would be interested in at all feel free Sun is bringing shame too now. Come on, buddies. Can't be destroying the house like this. Where is this dude, anyways? Well, where is his holdings, rather? Oh, that's that island. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab that. Sure. Look at that gold. Yeah, no, that gold is not better off spent bribing someone. That gold is better off uh, being used to fight uh, this dude down here. We still may need more piety, damn it. Uh-huh. I agree. I agree. Well, I don't know. You didn't see how uh, the main Umiad army got trounced by about a half stack of what France had. Is someone trying to bring the Shia dynasty back? Oh man. Oh yeah. I take it, uh, when you played as Asteria, did you play as them right after the tutorial? Because I know that the tutorial kind of gets you playing in that little sandbox there. And that was the trap that I fell for. Tutorial went, finished tutorial. Is that, oh, okay, well, since I'm familiar with this area now, let's start here. Oh, shit. Idle council members? Yeah, we need to study tech. And we need to study tech bad, so we're going over to Thrake here. And... We'll do some uh, improving our relations with people in the home realm first. For now, yeah. In... In this, in the Umiad, I am no, no. In uh, in Western Nation, if I can't, if I can't get a matrilineal marriage to try to sneak territory under people's noses in Western, then I will use them for alliances. 
as Muslims, you can't do a matrilineal marriage, so I pretty much have to use daughters for alliances. But when doing Western, I do like to try to see who I can use to uh, get away with stuff. Like um, in the current succession game in Ireland that me and uh, Atreides have going, I set up before I passed the uh, before I passed the save to him. I set up the entire kingdom of Lombardy. Their leader, who was either this guy or this guy's son in that case, to a matrilineal marriage with one of my character's daughters. So the heir has a sister who was going to have uh, children of our of our dynasty in Lombardy. Because kind of the goal was, hopefully, because that's still technically a kingdom title, as you see here, under the Empire of Italia. Our goal is, our goal is currently trying to get the Empire of Britannia in that game. So if we have the higher title, of the Empire of Britannia before they have an heir to be the King of Lombardy, then that will mean, oh, hey, the Kingdom of Lombardy falls under our rule on a technicality. I also set the same thing up with uh, Burgundy as well. I married two of their... Uh, I think I think I did one matrilineal marriage to Burgundy and then had a son who was married to a princess of Burgundy to try to get claims on that. Also in that game we had a we had somehow gotten a matrilineal marriage from our who was at that time the queen that I was playing as of Ireland and Scotland and Wales. We got one with Svithiod. So we... Yep, yep, in... Uh, if you have the... If you have the, uh... Brit Empire... Any kingdoms that you don't have in there which you probably will have most of them, but any that you don't, you will be able to uh, just press the uh, kingdom claim on, basically. Kind of like how a kingdom can press ducal claims. At, like the flip, uh, snap of a wrist. And snap of a finger, flip of the wrist, rather. And... Oh! That would be because the person, like, if we have the Empire of Britannia, and then the Kingdom of Lombardy, right, it, it's a very convoluted thing. It's, it's because the person, if we have the Empire set up before the Kingdom goes to a new heir, if the person who is going to be the heir is of a lower ranking when they get the title than us, and they would be of our dynasty, of our house, they would be under it. So if they have, if their heir here gets, uh, say their heir gets born and the king immediately dies shortly thereafter, and we're still not the emperor, we no long we don't have a higher rank than the person who has inherited this of our house so they would not see us as a le as a liege they would see us as equal rank and they would then be able to just say oh hey we're our own people still if they're of a lower rank than you then yes this is why if, say, you have three kingdoms, but, yeah, I'm, I'm honestly using 
Ireland as a uh, almost a crutch here because it's what I'm so used to. Having uh, Kingdom of Ireland, Kingdom of Pictland, Kingdom of Wales. Say we have someone who is really mad at us and wants a kingdom title. If we're not an empire over here and we give the Kingdom of Wales over to someone, he then leaves our realm because he's a king and is of equal rank to us and does not see any reason to uh, be associated with us. That's one of the unfortunate things. Yeah, I'd say one of the... I would say that that is absolutely a, a good idea because it's a lot easier to control everything. So, whereas you can see here, I got a bunch of messages to see if any vassals are do doing some crazy shit or anything of that nature. Um, you don't have quite as many things that you're dealing with if you... Like, have, say, one to two versus having, uh, I think I have 14, six, 16 now, okay. So, still get plenty of those messages up in the corner, but you should see what happens when you have an empire. Really fun, though. Really fun, really enjoyable. But what I would say here, a... How do you see what benefit the people have when they make a plot? Ah, uh, what do you mean? In, in what aspect? What benefit? Like, are you talking about when you have a plot and you want to invite, or... Oh. Um, yeah, here. I will, uh... I will show you. I'm gonna auto-stop plots here. And, uh... Hover over the reason once someone has a plot, which should be relatively quick. Let's see here. Actually, I bet you I can go here and find some random vassal that has a plot, I bet. Okay, um, so what'll happen is it'll pop a little circle up here in the middle and you can hover over it seeing if their benefit either they're trying to fabricate a claim to take territory from someone or sometimes it'll be either A, they're in succession so say they're maybe one or two removed from the air, and they're looking to move up in the ranking, they'll take someone out. Maybe they won't be the direct heir, but they will do that. Or B, they could be doing that effectively to assist their liege. So say like a spy master or so. Spy master says, oh hey, my liege becomes more powerful and thusly I get the benefit of being higher in the realm because he gains rank. I will go ahead and take out the dude who's one step before him on the uh, on the air. Now, hopefully, it will give us something that I can show you here in a moment. Here, perfect. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. That one's a lot clearer. Yep. 
You need to get a Grand Vizier, okay. Usually there is... Oh, no, not at all. No worries. It's actually really fun to kind of talk and discuss um, different things, especially to um, to learn about that stuff. Here, let me go ahead and... Uh, I want to pass you another link to, really quick, the uh, person who is who I'm doing the succession game with. He has a lot of information as well that can help out. He's the dude that I'm doing the succession game with, and admittedly, he is much better as well at uh, kind of talking about some of the more uh, delicate things in this game. So he definitely has a lot of info that'll really help. And right now, uh, oh shit, he has his 34th. Our, he has uh, the 34th episode of our succession game going on. That's pretty fucking hilarious. Now, the sad thing is I haven't seen that yet because technically that's spoilers. Oh yeah. Feel free to, to ask all the questions you want. I love talking about this game. It is really, really enjoyable, honestly. Do I not have a court physician? I don't. Record this. Or we'll recruit this dude. Oh yeah. Yeah, we got a full playlist so far, and it's just gonna keep building and building. That's pretty pretty awesome. Oh shit, I forgot I no longer hold that holding. Oh yeah, if your holding isn't a castle and it says it's the wrong type, you give it to anyone. You don't want to give someone who's already a bishop, uh, which means he already handle, has a church, a second one. Ah, okay. Yeah, one of the big things is you don't ever want to give a person more than one title unless you absolutely have to, just to keep everything consolidated. Like, these guys, I kind of took the realm from them, but if I... If I uh, actually personally held the stuff, I would be divvying it out to separate people too. Um, ah. Yeah, if a a duchy all or a duchy always has to go to the count or of someone or of someone or in that ducal area. Yeah, no. Be as cutthroat as you can. Be as cutthroat in this game as you can. If you are uh having a uh ducal claim uh or wow, ducal claim. Sorry about that. Uh if you have a duchy being assigned out to someone as long as he only holds one count title, that is ideal. 
You want to have a bunch of separate counts, so that way they can squabble amongst each other. And always enforce gavel kind on your realms below you while, while you can to try to ensure that they get a Ming Explosion. Ming Explosion referencing Europa 4. That's kind of one of my other big things. Let's see here. Also, I guess while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, chuck this in here too. You can't, no. It's... Usually what you'll need to do is, of course, revoke it and then assign to someone else. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. E even if you give him another title first, he'll get mad if you take the second one anyways, too. The main reason being is, whereas you are, of course, building your dynasty... The AIs are also building their dynasties. So that's kind of one of the biggest things. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. But yeah, people will get a bit angry at anything that isn't a direct gain to them. So, one of the things you can always do, too, is you can say fuck it and revoke a title from someone. And if you don't have anyone at all that you can give to that'll be really loyal, you can always use either gold and prestige, piety, or just straight up gold to create a commander, only man or noble, out of thin air. And then hand them a title. Sometimes what I do is I create them out of thin air, I gift them gold, and then give them the title. That'll really make them uh, fairly loyal for quite some time. I just want to see if I can get anything out of fighting this band of raiders. Normally I wouldn't have done this, but... Eh. I don't care about the person who holds land, because I'm not the direct heir. This is more so to see if I can get anything out, anything out of it. And this dude really wants to pay us to get land. But... We have a Demensei size of 6. If you can ever get them to um, revolt without starting a faction, that is usually a great way. Okay. You know, that honestly makes sense. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, thanks.
Alrighty. Okay, now that he's done that, we can borrow again. Oh yeah, absolutely. Their comp is a bunch of light infantry, okay. <laughs> so just in case they try to flee I'm going to raise that levy right there just to stop them in place and send over to crush them <laughs> We're doing, we're doing good now. Doing pretty well. Let's build some castle walls and maybe a... Yeah, let's build a barracks level too. I do want to get some heavy infantry going. And, um... 